Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about something called ions. So don't confuse ions with isotopes people. In an earlier video we learned about isotopes. And when we talked about isotopes, we talked about how they have different numbers of neutrons inside of their nucleus. So isotopes deal with neutrons whereas ions deal with electrons. So what are ions people and how do they work? Well it says right here that ions are atoms with the charge formed when that atom or atoms gain or lose one or more electrons. All right, so basically an ion is a charged atom that is formed when that atom either loses or gains one electron. Now, keep in mind in an earlier video also, we talked about electrons and we said that electrons have a negative charge. So if you get rid of something negative or if you lose something negative, then you become more positive. And if you gain something negative, then you become more negative. All right, so ions are atoms with a charge form when the atom either loses or gains one or more electrons. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. If we take a look at this image right here, what we can see here is that this is a, a lithium-7 atom, right? It's got three protons, four neutrons inside of its nucleus. And if you take a look, it has three electrons outside of its nucleus, two in the first energy level and one in the outer energy level. And what do you call all electrons that are in the outermost energy level or ring here? Well, they're called valence electrons. So lithium has one little valence electron. Now, the thing about lithium and all atoms on the periodic table, for that matter, is that they want to look like a noble gas. The noble gases are the cool kids on the block. Uh, they have a completely filled outer energy level. And that's the, the, the goal of every single atom on the periodic table is to look like a noble gas, to have an outer energy level, an outer ring here that is completely filled with the maximum number of electrons that it can hold. All right, so here's, here's a lithium atom right here. And in an earlier video, once again, we, we learned that a, a lithium atom, or all atoms on the periodic table for that matter, are neutral, right? They have the same number of protons, which are positive inside of their nucleus, as they do electrons, which are negative outside of their nucleus. And so the total charge of these two is going to cancel out and be neutral. So every atom on the periodic table of elements is neutral, including this lithium atom right here. But what's going to happen to the overall charge of this lithium atom if this lithium atom loses one of its valence electrons? So what if one of these little valence electrons, or its only valence electron, for that matter, goes bye-bye? Let's suppose this lithium atom... Uh, loses this valence electron. Well, what will happen to the overall charge of this atom right here? Well, what ends up happening is that when atoms lose electrons, they become more positive. And if this lithium atom here loses one negative particle from it, then what's going to end up happening over here is that it's going to become more positive or positive one. Since it lost one electron right here, then it's going to become a positive one, but we don't need to write the one uh, over here. Okay, we never need to write a, uh, a, a one plus, just simply plus, okay? So what we end up with is a lithium ion. This right here is called a lithium ion or an ion, okay? So let's take a look at another example over here. If we take a look over here, we have a stable or neutral uh, nitrogen atom here, right? It's neutral. Once again, it has the same number of electrons as it does protons. So these guys cancel each other out. And this is a neutral atom, right? It's neutral. And it has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons right here, right? It has five valence electrons. So what ends up happening with nitrogen is that when it reacts with metals on the periodic table, it has a tendency to gain three electrons from whatever metal it's reacting with, okay? So if this atom here gains three electrons, remember electrons are negative, and if it gains three, then this stable atom right here is going to become an atom with a charge. It's going to become a three minus ion since it gained three electrons. Okay, so what we end up over here is 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 an, is an ion, a negatively charged uh, atom. In this case, the nitrogen atom becomes a nitrogen ion. In this case, we'll call this nitride. And in a couple seconds, we'll learn how to name these. Okay, and if we take a look right here, this has seven neutrons, seven protons, which are positive, and 10 electrons, which are negative. So if we take a look right here, we can see that the overall charge of this little ion here is going to be three minus. Okay, so understand the concept that ions 
are atoms with a charge formed when atoms either lose or gain one or more valence electrons. So let's take a look now at two types of ions, cations and anions. All right, so there's two kinds of ions in this world. There are cations and anions. So let's talk about cations first. What are cations? Well, it says right here that cations are positively charged ions or atoms formed when uh, that atom loses one or more valence electrons. Okay, so when an atom loses one or more valence electrons, they become more positive and they become these things right here called cations. So a cation is nothing more than a positively charged ion. And what type of atoms on the periodic table form cations? Well, it says right here that the metals form cations. And in an earlier video, we learned that all of these to the left of the stair step line here are going to be metals, right? Except the hydrogen. But hydrogen is placed over here because it has a tendency to uh, behave like a cation. All right, so if we take a look, all the metals, everything to the left of this stair step line, when it reacts with other atoms on the periodic table, like nonmetals over here, they're going to lose one or more electrons and form positively charged ions called cations. And in fact, if we take a look at group one, the alkali metals, all of these guys are going to lose one electron when they react with other atoms or nonmetals on the periodic table and form positive one ions or if you uh, prefer one plus ions, but we typically don't need to write the one here. You can leave the one off when you're indicating the charge. Just like in math, you don't need to put a one as a coefficient. It's not one X, it's just X. If we take a look at the alkaline earth metals, when these guys react with other atoms on the periodic table, they're gonna lose two electrons and form two plus ions, okay? They're gonna lose two electrons and form two plus ions. So beryllium atom is gonna form a Be2 plus ion, magnesium is going to form a Mg2 plus ion, etc, etc. If we take a look a few more, if we take a look at aluminum right here, aluminum is going to form a, a 3 plus ion, it's going to have a tendency to lose three electrons when it reacts with other atoms on the periodic table, zinc is going to form 2 plus, and right here silver is going to form a positive or 1 plus ion. Okay, so you might be asking about some of these other ones. These other ones have varying uh, oxidation states. For example, iron, sometimes it's 2 plus, sometimes it's 3 plus, depending on the situation. Same with lead. Lead, sometimes it's 2 plus, sometimes it's 4 plus, depending on the situation. And we'll learn about that in a later video. But for now, understand that metals form cations, which are positively charged ions that are produced when those metals lose one or more electrons. And let's take a look now at ions. I'm sorry, anions. All right, anions are a little different. It says right here that an anion is a negatively charged atom formed when atoms gain one or more valence electrons. So when an atom gains one or more electrons, keep in mind electrons are negative, they're gonna become negative, right? They're gonna become negatively charged ions called anions, all right? And what metal, I'm sorry, what atoms on the periodic table are gonna form anions? Well, it says right here, your nonmetals. So everything to the right of the stair step line all of these right here to the right of the stair step line are going to form anions when they react with other metals on the periodic table with the exception of the noble gases. Keep in mind the noble gases have a tendency not to react because they already have an outer energy level or a valent shell that is completely filled to the max with electrons. So they neither lose or gain electrons. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a couple groups from the non-metal side. If we take a look at the halogens right here, when these guys react with metals on the periodic table, they're going to have a tendency to gain electrons and form one minus ions or just simply minus ions, right? For example, fluoride uh, is going to uh, have a negative one charge or a one minus charge or just simply a minus charge. It's going to gain one electron. If we take a look at group 16 here, oxygen on down, these guys are going to have a tendency to gain two electrons and form two minus ions. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic, these guys are going to have a tendency to gain three electrons. And carbon right here, this will have a tendency to gain four electrons when it, uh, when it behaves as a metal. Okay, so uh, understand the uh, concept of anions. Anions are negatively charged atoms formed when that atom gains one or more uh, valence electrons. Right? Their ionic charge, I'm sorry, their charge is going to change. It's no longer going to be a stable atom. It's going to be a negatively charged particle called an anion. All right, so let's take a look now at how we name these guys next. All right, when we're naming these, it's pretty simple. It says when naming a cation, simply name the element followed by the word 
ions. So for example, here's a magnesium atom. It's stable. It has no charge at all. But now take a look. We can see here that this magnesium atom here has lost two electrons and now has a positive charge. And when we name this, it's simply called the magnesium ion. Magnesium ion. When aluminum loses three electrons, it becomes the uh, aluminum ion. Al3 plus would be your aluminum ion. When sodium loses one electron, it's going to uh, it's going to produce or form a sodium ion. All right. So when naming a cation, simply name the metal. Uh, and then follow it by the word ion. It's that simple. When we're naming anions, it's a little different. All right, when we're naming these anions, it's a little different. Take a look. Here's a sulfur atom right here. And when it gains two electrons, its name changes to sulfide. So we're going to keep the root sulf and we're going to drop the old suffix er and we're going to add an ide suffix to this. So sulfur will become sulfide. When fluorine uh, gains one electron, it's going to become fluoride, a fluoride ion. Okay. And last but not least, when nitrogen gains three electrons, it's going to produce a nitride ion. All right. So when you're naming an ion, <clears throat> simply drop the uh, the suffix, keep the root, and add a new suffix, ide. For example, oxygen will become oxide. Phosphorus will become phosphide etc 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 chlorine will become chloride etc all right so let's look at a few examples and uh and go from there all right at this point in the video i recommend that you pause the video pull out your periodic table of elements and try to fill this chart in all by yourself so go ahead and pause go get your periodic table of elements and try to fill this in yourself all right so here we go we have a uh, atom the calcium atom we want to know what the ion name will be well this is a metal so it's going to be called the calcium ion will be the name of its uh, its ion and what is the charge well it comes from group two on the periodic table so we have calcium as its symbol and its charge is going to be ca2 plus and what does this two plus mean well this two plus means that this calcium atom has lost two electrons so loses two electrons all right let's look at this next one this next one is zinc that's the atom but what is the ion name well zinc is a metal so this is oops i forgot to put ion here so this is going to be a zinc ion right the symbol is zn and zinc has a tendency to lose two electrons right so it forms zn two plus ions and we just said a second ago that this is going to lose two electrons. That's what the plus two means right here. What about phosphorus? Phosphorus. Remember, this is a nonmetal, so this will simply become phosphide. And let's take a look. What is its symbol? It's going to be P, and then phosphide comes from phosphorus comes from group 15 so it's going to gain three electrons right it's going to gain three electrons there we go let's take a look at this next one iron iron is a metal right so we'll uh, just call this iron ion right and this is actually kind of a bad example. Uh, iron has a tendency to form positive two or positive three ions. So let's just pretend this is a iron two ion. What that means is that the symbol will be Fe and its charge is a two plus. All right, the Roman numeral in parentheses refers to this little ionic charge right there. And this means that the iron atom has a tendency to lose two electrons when it produces its ion with a two plus charge. Let's take a look at this one, aluminum. It's a metal, so this is called aluminum ion. Let's take a look. Its symbol is Al, and aluminum has a tendency to gain, I'm sorry, to lose three electrons. This is going to lose three electrons when it reacts with other atoms on the periodic table. Let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen is a nonmetal, so it looks like its ion name will be oxide its symbol will be O and it comes from group 16 on the periodic table like we just said it's going to form two minus ions which means that it gains two electrons all 
And last one right here, we have iodine. Iodine is going to become iodide. It's a nonmetal. So we change the ending to an IDE ending. It comes from group 17, which is a halogen, and those are 1 minus, or just simply minus. And that, what this means right here is that the iodine is going to gain one electron. All right, so those are ions in a nutshell. If you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the uh, comments section down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you guys found this helpful.